What's up guys? Welcome to another Watcher of Realms video. This is PGTV or Phoenix Gaming TV. And uh, today guys, we're going to go over the new update in today's uh, Watcher of Realms. Now this is gonna not going to happen till um, if you look here in the events, um, go down here. It's going to happen in four days, 13 hour so four and a half days um anyways let's go over what they're gonna be talking about so the upcoming 11 28 is a special day in our thanksgiving version we have included massive content such as the launch of campaign chapter 10 a reduced number of summons required for a guaranteed uh legendary hero in hero summon enhancement for valkyra God Blade of North Frost and Kai the Beast Bane. Reward enhancement for quests. So basically, they're gonna, like, say you do your dailies, they're gonna enhance that. I don't know what it's gonna be quite yet, but we'll figure out when it, the day comes for that update. And adjustments to Odyssey quests and rewards. So if you haven't finished your Odyssey, so like for me, Right now, for my Odyssey, I'm on 63, so it's going to be a while before I can actually um, get there. So that's going to be another uh, thing that we're going to be trying pushing as well. Um, all right. Additionally, we will launch a series of Thanksgiving events on 11:22, offering rare summoning crystal times 15 and active uh, activity skill choice chest times one for free to everyone who participates so i don't know if this is going to be like a event where you gotta summon or whatever for um a skin choice which i don't know is a good thing or a bad thing but we'll find out when the time comes commanders thank you for being uh, with us every step of the way and our your uh, unwavering support means the world to us we're excited to embark on the next chapter on our adventure together so this is going to happen uh, next Tuesday I it, believe it's going to be a couple hours um, it's going to be 19.15 till 21.15 UTC time uh, it's gonna cost a hundred diamonds, which they could have gave us like something better than this like um, Some points or something or even a couple maybe like even a Legendary summoning crystal would have been better um, All right, so summon uh, number one uh, invocation of Spirits the pity timer activation has been adjusted from 200 summons to 180 summons a legendary crisp uh, hero is guaranteed within 200 summons uh, Divine summoning after the pity timer activates the drop rates increase per summon has been raised from 2 to 5 percent a legendary hero is guaranteed within 20 summons so before I don't know what it was before, but I know sometimes if you were lucky on a banner and you wanted a pull, sometimes you're it's like the first one, or sometimes it takes like two, just depending on how lucky you are in that banner. Uh, a couple times I did get the um, limited edition, uh, like Zarus for instance, I did get him after pulling my second divine uh, summoning crystal. So that was actually pretty good. And then also, I believe I did it with somebody else. Um, I think it was Nyx. When I got Nyx back. Um, when it was Nyx and uh, Helga. Uh, Ancient Summoning. The Pity Timer activation has been adjusted from 200 summons to 185. So they're almost the same. It's just they're kind of off by 5. This one for the limited edition is going to be 200. Which is... Not going to be that bad. So let's go down to the heroes. So Valkyra, Godblade of North Frost. Uh, basic attack deals 100 
percent AOE damage to multiple enemies in range and inflicts 15% vulnerability magic damage on them. Deals 100% AOE damage to multiple enemies in range. Her talent is a new talent that was added. Inflicts 15% vulnerability magic damage on enemies entering the attack range. When an enemy dies in range, increases Valkyra's damage by 15% for 5 seconds. Awakened 5, an ally revived by Miracle Gains. A Divine Blessing increases their damage by 100% for 10 seconds. When an ally is revived by Miracle, both the ally and Vek Valkyra gain a Divine Blessing, increasing their damage by 100% for 10 seconds. That's actually pretty damn good. Um, I'm just surprised that they did do um, major changes uh, with, you know, like for instance, our next hero, Kai. Uh, I think he's pretty good, but a lot of people kind of um, don't like him, dislike him. I thought he was actually pretty good in uh, Gear Raid 3, uh, 19, so I think he's actually pretty, not that bad. Um, we'll see how he is um, later on. Uh, so, Kai the Beast Bane, his talent is optimization. What was optimization? Uh, placing Worm Snare no longer interferes with the hero's basic attack action. The placement range of the snares is changed to adjacent tile instead of random tiles. So, Doomsday Cluster increased the initial rate from. 400 to 550 before launches a cluster projectile at one enemy in range the explosion deals 350 to 500 aoe damage to up to eight nearby enemies and splits the projectiles into three small bombs after a short delay the small bombs detonate each dealing 100 to 150 aoe damage up to five nearby enemies the cluster projectile can trigger every worm snare within the blast radius in advance. So that was before. After launches a cluster projectile at the furthest enemy in range, the explosion deals 400 to 550 AOE damage up to 10 nearby enemies and releases up to three small bombs. Each small bomb flies toward one enemy nearby enemy. Dealing 150 to 200 percent AOE damage up to five nearby enemies. The cluster projectile can trigger every worm snare within the blast radius in advance. Doomsday reprise skill revamped. So each enemy hit by the cluster projectile or small bombs of Doomsday cluster restores point. 3 to point seven percent rage for the hero. When hitting airborne units, the rage restored is doubled, so it'd be 0.14 uh, or 0.6. Eridiction uh, uh, protocol. Skill revamped. After the cluster projectile hits, increases all allied uh, marksman heroes' damage against airborne units by. 14 to 20 percent for 10 to 15 seconds uh, awaken number one revamped reduces the interval of placing worm snare by five seconds and the snare will inflict 20 percent defense de reduction on enemies for five seconds when triggered uh awaken two revamped cost minus three um i think right now um let's see for him, let's look at Kai real quick. He is a marksman, so look at Kai real quick. What his so his cost is twenty two, so it's gonna be like eighteen, I believe. Um. All right, so let's go back down. Alright, so Awaken 3 revamped each cluster projectile launched by Doomsday Cluster. 
released up to three extra small bombs after the explosion, so that's actually pretty good. So if there's an extra couple enemies or whatnot, I think they'll take cover, um, take care of that. Awaken 5, revamped when eradiction protocol is triggered, increases the affected allies damage against airborne units by an extra 10%. Um, and then hero takes have been entirely revamped. So Kagiri, the Undying Ronin. Uh, so Awaken 3, description adjusted. Within, uh, before, it was within 10 seconds after Sweeping Strike is activated. Each direct damage dealt inflicts additional damage one time equal to 35% of the damage within 10 seconds after Ember Strikes is activated. Each direct damage dealt inflicts uh, additional damage two times each time equal to 25% of the direct damage after within 10 seconds of after sweeping strike is activated each direct damage dealt inflicts additional damage one time equal to 35% 35% of the direct damage excuse me guys uh, within 10 seconds after ember strike is activated each direct damage dealt inflicts additional damage two times each time e equival uh, equal to 25% of the direct damage when either of these strikes triggers swallow counter the corresponding effect of the strike becomes permanent not bad um, guild war guild war season 6 will start on 11:18 and exactly Midnight. Uh, UTC time. So new season, uh, seasonal demon soldier added is the infernal cleric. The previous seasonal demon soldier, demon soldier Garrett guard is now obtainable through Gear Raid One, instead of through the Guild War. Maps updated, Central Keep and Defense Tower have been upgraded to brand new maps. Other Guild War updates, Battle Time Adjustment, the battle duration for Central Keep and Defense Tower has been extended from 180 seconds to 210 seconds. That might give you a little bit more of an edge if you, say, have a tanky team and you're trying to get through the... Um, you know, get to the, uh, the soul, uh, being intact, and you want to try and get those three, um, attacks in before the 10, uh, 210 seconds are up, then it will be not that bad, I think. Um, but it is, um, quite of a jump, um, in seconds so right now it's additional 30 seconds um for that adjustment to the update method for guild war garrison teams gear and artifact info change from reading current gear and artifacts at matchmaking to allowing commanders to manually update gear and artifact info after you garrison in guild war the gear info at the time of garrison will be immediately recorded. Afterward, you can view and manually update the gear and artifact info through the team configuration interface on your own garrison uh, fortification interface. After manually updating gear and artifact info, changing or unequipping gear will not affect the gear info of the garrison lineup. Uh, number three, optimize the Guild Wars point uh, deduction experience. When there's a large point difference between the winning and losing sides, the losing guild will have a smaller Guild War point deduction. Number four, increase rewards for attacking um, Central Keep. Increase gold gain from attacking Central Keep and the additional random rewards can be obtained. Adjusted the um, replay loading interface, allowing you to check the level of demon soldiers used during loading. That's actually 
bad. Not bad. I like that idea. Because, let's say you have a, a legendary one uh, demon soldier. Like, let's say it's the mage one. Uh, you don't know what level he is. They should put that in there. Also, it would be a good idea if they could put, like, you know, how many more shards they need as well. Like, in the interface. That would be cool if they could add that in there. Uh, added email notifications when a member garrison uh, position is adjusted. Did uh, friendly face-off now includes Guild War uh, Gladiator Gauntlet? Uh, added a new option: enable Guild War face-off. The original enable friendly face-off option no longer includes Guild members. And then Guild War uh, the Gladiator Gauntlet uh, launches uh, eleven seventeen, and you have to be eligible to participate. Um, so group five, if your server starts with a five, top 256 guilds from Guild War Season 5 have been cleared campaign H514. So you have to beat that in order to be eligible for that uh, Gladiator's Gauntlet. Uh, server group six, uh, server ID starts with six, 64 guilds. I uh, have to clear that. But these are from Season 5. So it's starting Season... I think it's Season 5. I don't know if it's a new season or not. But we'll have to check to find out. Um, feature introduction. So the Gladiator's Gauntlet is a top guild elimination tournament. That launches right after each Guild War season calculator phase. The number of eligible... Um, guilds depend on the number of registered guilds for the current season uh, guild war on the server. Uh, currently, server group 5 includes the top 256 guild and server 6 include the top 64 guilds. Uh, Gladiator's Gauntlet maps are adjusted based on the current season's guild ward map uh, requiring a new garrison setup. Gladiator's Gauntlet has a two-day preparation phase for registration, following by daily elimination rounds, during which only victorious guilds can advance to subsequent uh, rounds. Defeated guilds in the semifinals compete for an additional round in a third-place match. Each elimination round has a four-hour team adjustment window with the final 20 minutes reserved for matchmaking, during which battles are suspended. Uh, Gladiator Gauntlet employs a single elimination format with no ties. The guild with the higher remaining total HP percentage of garrison fortifications at each round's end emerges victorious. Tiebreakers consider the total number of destroyed soul cores, followed by the guild's regular season ranking. Uh, Gladiator's Gauntlet offers no per round victory uh, rewards or contribution rewards. Only single offense rewards and final ranking rewards are up for grabs. Claim your spoils during the ranking calculation phase. Guild eliminated in the same round share identical ranks and rewards. Compared to uh, regular Guild War seasons, each Gladiator Gauntlet round features fewer battles and lower garrison fortification HP, while maintaining the same number of demon captain uses. Each garrison team can only be attacked once by the same commander. All right, gear increase the drop quantity of smoldering scale and uh, sanguine fabric in gear raid one, two, three, and gear dungeon one and two. Added three new tier three gear sets: uh, astral guardian, uh, two pieces instead of uh, before it was HP um, twenty percent. Or was it 25%? It was 20% and 10% defense. Now it's 30% and 
and 15% defense. Uh, Cataclysm, three pieces. Uh, upon landing a critical hit with a basic attack, increases the hero's damage by 9% for 5 seconds, stacking up to 5 times. That's 45%. Up to 45%. Uh, Wings of Grace, three pieces. Uh, healing effect plus 30, increases the speed of uh, attack of the hero and the ally with the highest attack and range by 12%. New gear type, exclusive gear. Uh, when obtaining Mythic T3 gear, players have a chance to obtain exclusive Mythic gear for specific heroes or factions. Uh, when the corresponding hero equips their exclusive gear, a powerful additional uh, attribute will be activated. Uh, exclusive gear also has Ancient and Variant versions. When selling Ancient, Mythic, or Variant, mythic gear you will randomly receive one of the following rewards so either the spirits um eternal bullion um in shard for recasting hammer um after the update you will we will send compensation to commanders who have sold gear before the update via mail based on the number of gear sold for example if a commander has sold two pieces of ancient gear and three pieces of variant gear They'll receive Ancient Gear Competition Chest times 2 and Variant Gear Competition Chest times 3 as compensation. These chests will also yield the aforementioned uh, rewards at, the, at random. So these are going to be random rewards, so you're not going to get the same rewards probably um, whenever. And then add a thumbs up label to the hero. Gear interface, these labels are displayed by default and can be toggled off through the filter uh, menu. Quest and achievements. Um, sorry for being a long video, guys, but obviously this has to be, you know, everything has to be um, gone over because since this is a long um, and better, I guess... Uh, update than it what it was um, I'm pretty sure a lot of people are kind of want to come back the ones that left a while ago because you know some of these games they kind of get you at some times but sometimes they don't get you so they kind of want to do what they have to do so anyways quests and achievements added a reward or uh, enhancement feature for quests uh, progress rewards for daily weekly and monthly quests will be gradually enhanced as they are completed Additionally, each enhancement will grant an enhancement bonus. After the update, the enhancement will be conducted according to Commander's current progress. So the daily quest adjustments. Remove the quest, successfully enhance gear three times. Change the quest, obtain three pieces of gear from gear raid to obtain one piece of gear from gear raid. Added a new quest, clear faction trial on any difficulty one time. Uh, change the rewards of the Odyssey quest. Um, achieve an S or above rating for three different bosses in the Immortal Con Codex. Two unpolished legendary soul, soul Stone. After the update, commanders who have already completed this quest will receive unpolished legendary Soul Stone times one via mail. Uh, added a new achievement, Dungeon Master. Clear all gear dungeon stages to claim the reward unpolished legendary soul stone times one uh, added new achievement and medals related to immortal codex and tied you can view them in the achievement system after the update uh, 120 day window login achievement optimized counts from the first window login any login on a windows device counts as your daily windows login regardless of personal logins that day uh reduce the difficulty of some odyssey quest and then you have some skins that they have they have empress the judgment for hat suit uh the harvest maiden for hollow and then golden ages for oleg which is not that bad so this is a skin shop they should have these free like once a month i think because then that would be a lot better uh others added chapter 10 to campaign normal 
after clearing stage 18 of gear raid 1, 2, and 3, the last slot of the Dwarven Association will offer items from the following list. Uh, rare Summoning Crystal, uh, Mythic Extract, Stamina, Huge Stamina Pot, Shard Legendary Summoning Crystal, um, Shard, uh, Ancient Summoning Crystal, uh, Shard, and then uh, Refining Crystal, Shard, and then Recap. Casting Hammer. Uh, after clearing stage 18 of Gear Raid 1, 2, and 3, all gear uh, available in the Dwarven will be Mythic Gear. So that's actually pretty good. They should have done this in the way, 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 way beginning, like after the first update that they had. They should have had this all the time. Uh, daily sign in rewards after 180 days, three star. Uh, Psychic Power and Legendary Extract adjusted to 4-star Psychic Power and Mythic Extract. Uh, improve the Invisual Presentation of the Team Interface. Increase the chance of exclusive artifacts in both Titan Forge and Wisdom Forge from 2 to 4%. Change the Light Effect of 5-star... Psychic power from golden to purple in the team's interface. Heroes not equipping all five pieces of gear now have a special mark displayed on their icon. Uh, added thumbs up labels to the hero gear interface. These labels are displayed by default and can be toggled off through the filter system. In the gear interface, when selecting a single piece of gear for replacement, you can now preview the changes in the hero's attributes and BP. Uh, artifact material raid stage 19 to stage 22 now have separate team presets. Stage 19 and stage 21 use one preset while stage 20 and 22 use another. Um, added telegram link and telegram follow quest for Russian speaking regions. Thank you for joining guys. This is Phoenix Gaming TV and this is a Watcher of Realms video and we will see you in the next one. Don't forget.